librarians spend all day long just sitting and reading. Libraries are super quiet. Shh. What do we need libraries now that we have Amazon? These are just some of the things that I have heard over the years said about public libraries. A few months ago, I was at an event and I was wearing my name tag. And on it, it said my name, that I work for the public library, and it had my title on it with the word innovation. And the woman that I was speaking to, I watched her as she glared at me and she looked up and she looked at the name tag and she said, what does the library do that's innovative? Ouch, <laughs> that stung. And I am constantly surprising people about what public libraries are doing these days. Even my earliest memory of public libraries were dark and dingy. But still, something about that day just bothered me and I knew I had to scream from the rooftops because people don't know what they're missing. Public libraries are vibrant community centers where everyone is welcome. And it's that accessibility, which is why I'm so passionate and why I'm standing here today, the access to that kind of freedom. You see, back in 1960, my grandparents had to flee their home country of Cuba and they had to leave almost everything behind. Well, almost everything. My grandfather, he owned a shoe company in Cuba and he did not want to leave my grandmother's wedding rings behind. So he took the rings and he stuffed them in the heels of shoes and he got them into the United States so that they had a piece of their home with them when they restarted their lives here in the US. And because of that, I get to look at these rings every single day. And they're a constant reminder to me of the sacrifice that they made for a chance for me to have freedom and for my children to have freedom. And libraries are leveraging that accessibility, giving us the chance to grow, to learn, to be better versions of ourselves. And inside, you will be shocked by what you will find. Do you want to touch a stingray? Come and check out a pass and you'll get in free to the aquarium with it. Would you like to see the solar system? Come and borrow a telescope, take it home. Some libraries are even letting people take power tools and bicycles home. And it's that experience that is just changing the way that libraries are serving their communities. A few months ago, I was in one of the libraries and a woman, Peggy, came in. She walked over to the computer area and she was a ball of nerves. She was clutching her cell phone. She was holding on tight to it. And she looked up at the employee and said, oh my gosh, I need your help. I don't know what to do. I've got to get this court document uploaded. I'm not sure how to do it. I, maybe scan. And the man looked at her and said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Whatever you need, we will help you. And I watched the tension in her shoulders drop. And she actually said to him, I depend on public libraries. I don't know what I would do without you. And that is happening all around this country in communities big and small. And libraries are adapting to the communities that they serve. And technology plays a huge role in that. Think about email. It's something that you use every single day. I certainly take it for granted but libraries are helping people every day set up emails. It's one of the most common things that library staff work on. And now think about it for a second. What would life be like without using your email? Buying something, applying for a lease, or applying for a job would become nearly impossible. But libraries are teaching people how to set emails up and teaching them how to use them without judgment. How many places do you know in America where you can get that kind of help? It's like the saying goes, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. 
If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And public libraries are feeding the hearts and minds of communities around this country. They're also feeding their bellies. During the COVID-19 pandemic, libraries around the country started providing food access programs to help fight food insecurity. And that accessibility has helped connect with communities. Last month, I was in one of our libraries, and I was working on emails, and a woman came in, let's call her Betty. And she said, good morning, <laughs> as she walked in. It was so loud and so lovingly that I had to look up from my computer. She was obviously a regular, she knew everyone in there, and she made her way over to the refrigerator. Sharon, that works at that library, grabbed a paper bag and met her over at the fridge. And the two of them, they looked through it, and they kind of decided what they were gonna take for the day. And she said, do you like, do you want some kale? And she said, oh, you, you know I love my kale. And they stuffed the bag and they closed it up. And then Sharon put her arm around Betty. And I watched them as the two of them walked out to the parking lot in this embrace. That connection. That's another reason people love their libraries. The lonely, they feel a little less lonely. Those who feel like outcasts in our society, they have a place of belonging in our spaces. Walk through one of our libraries, you might find some adults over in the community room doing Tai Chi. I have no idea what Tai Chi looks like. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> but take a class, <laughs> I probably should. Or you might find some teenagers over in the computer lab learning how to code. There's a woman making something in the 3D printer, or there might be a young man just looking for a cool place from the hot sun. My grandparents are gone now, but I know that they treasure that I fight and advocate for libraries and the inclusivity they provide. And I got an example of that a few weeks ago. I got invited to help one of our librarians do a story time. Now, story time is a pretty foundational program for children in our libraries. It helps kids learn early literacy skills. And so she was doing a special bilingual story time. And I speak Spanish, so she asked if I would help her. I was super excited. So I showed up and I was shocked. Annie, the librarian, she knew the name of every single one of the kids in that story time. There were like 30 kids. And so we got ready. There were a few new people who came specifically for the bilingual story time. And a woman sat in front of me and she spoke Spanish and her son Bruno sat in her lap. And so the way that it went was Annie would read a page in English of the story and I would read a page in Spanish. And when it got to me and I read that page, I tell you, Bruno's eyes just lit up as he looked at me those big, brown, beautiful eyes. And in that moment, we connected. And maybe he felt like he belonged a little bit more because he heard his language in that space. And libraries are always welcoming everyone to feel that way. So I want you to do something. I want you to go to your public library. Walk, run, bike, swim, I don't care, whatever it takes, go to a library. See what you'll discover and who you may connect with. Oh, and I promise, we still have books. 